gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I think I can make it now. The pain is gone. All of the bad. Johnny Nash, who made, his, who made his transition, left the planet. Hallelujah. Good morning. It's Rick Beattie here with Stacy Peckins bringing the music, and Kim, and Simon, and a whole bunch of pictures of people on the backs of the chairs. So you might wonder why I'm wearing my uh, spangly pink hat. If you've been around Unity Relic for a while, you probably know. Although this year has been different, breast cancer is still happening. This October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Many years ago, a mutual friend of April Ellenberg's and mine, uh, Grace Whiting McQueen, made her transition from breast cancer. And when I was sitting with Grace asking her, talking to her, she, as she asked me to do her service, her memorial service, and I said, of course. She said, but you have to promise me a couple of things. And I'm like, oh, what am I getting myself into? She said, you have to wear something flashy. Because she was a very flashy kind of a lady, and she loved to dance, and she loved life. And so um, April arranged to get this hat for me from my friend Anicia over at Renaissance Unity. And because I, I had seen Anisia wearing this hat, and so she had two, so now I have one. And typically on the days that April Ellenberg would walk in the three day for breast cancer, I would wear pink and wear my hat. Well, there was no three day this year, but we're still remembering not only Grace from a few years ago, but Navlet in our community, um, Anna, the hat lady who had breast cancer many years ago and survived, and our dear friend Sue Fabian, who's right in it right now. So for all of you ladies and men who have dealt with breast cancer, today I stand for you. God bless you. <clears throat> so I invite you to join me in our statement of being, and I want you to listen to the words carefully as you speak them. For this, this is a powerful prayer. This is a powerful prayer. God is all both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am 
an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And that's the truth, my friends, for you and for me and for everybody. Simon, could you hand me the daily word? I think I left it down there. Oh, no, I've got it. Uh, announcements today, Saturday in the park. We had a blast yesterday, almost 30 of us. It was a gorgeous day. Mary Wackro knocked it out of the park with her discussion about zeal. I have some video, when I get a chance to edit it, I am gonna be putting it up on our Facebook page because it's worth seeing. Uh, outstanding, and the people gathered were having a blast. We will have something going on this Saturday. It will probably be me because all the people that I normally ask to to help are all in prayer partner training or busy. So, but I'm looking for some help picking a topic. So if there's something you'd like to hear me lead a discussion about, bring a teaching to, and then, and then have a dialogue about, email me at rick, R-I-C, at unityofroyaloak.org. I would love to hear from you uh, in, in the next couple of days so I can prepare. Our prayer partners today, speaking of Mary Wackrow, she is anchoring the service right now in prayer and our beloved friend, Eleanor Weimer, the two of those powerful ladies are holding this service in prayer. And now I wanna share with you today's daily word, which we do with permission of Unity, the publishers of Daily Word. The key word today is prosperity for October the 11th, 2020. I am prosperous as I enjoy my daily blessings. I am prosperous as I enjoy my daily blessings. I'm comfortable with the person I see in the mirror as I begin my day, pink hat and all, yes. I'm filled with energy and enthusiasm for my work, my recreation, time with family or friends, or time for learning and reflection. My gratitude grows throughout the day as I take part in activities. I enjoy and spend time with the people I care about. As I prepare for sleep, I am grateful for the blessings of a day well lived. More than money or possessions, prosperity is an awareness of well-being, my ability to enjoy simple blessings. I strengthen my prosperity consciousness as I bless and appreciate my home, my friends and family, and my work. I increase the flow of abundance by sharing my time, talents, and treasure in service to others. And the Bible verse for today is Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. That is the truth of us, my dear friends. That is the truth of you and of me. So I'm gonna invite you to join me as we say together this morning the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we're just going to have a prayer. I did things in reverse today. Didn't look at my script. I'm going to start a prayer. I'll pause in the middle. I'm going to invite you to speak your words into the space. The people you're praying for, the circumstances, the situation, certainly we have lots to pray about. And remember, we don't, in unity, we don't beg an unwilling God. We bring ourselves into alignment in prayer with God's right and perfect will for us. And so we take a moment now to get centered, to take a breath together. Almighty Father, Mother, and everything God, beyond all of our words, you are present with us. Beyond all of our concepts, you are more than all of it. And we know that right now you are with us, with every one of us, to the extent to which we are willing to listen. We open our hearts and our minds. We trust to know that life is happening in the most perfect way right now. 
We have many things on our hearts and minds today, and we take a moment now to speak those prayers into the space. And certainly one of the things that I'm praying about is, and I invite you to pray about too with me, God, we're trusting and knowing that there's a peaceful way forward beyond our divisiveness, that we as Americans um, can unite and come together and move forward together past this pandemic and past the challenges that face us. And we're careful about what we say, not only about others, but about ourselves. We're careful about how we think about others and about ourselves. For we know that every thought we think and every word we say is indeed a prayer. Our thoughts are prayers and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Take charge of what you're saying. thought becomes a prayer and when I sing that song I think of my dear friend Lucille Olson from the Great Old Lansing area who wrote the song it's an adaptation of a concept from A Course in Miracles every thought is a prayer and I invite you to take a deep breath with me we're going to do it two more times deep breath in let it go ah Feel the release in your body. That's why I sigh it out. Take a deep breath. Sigh it out. Ah. We take a moment now to connect with the one. The one presence and the one power. The one life that we all share. And we begin by feeling that life force within us. Let your breathing be its natural state. Become aware of your body in space. Sit in the chair, lying down, wherever you are right now, on your yoga mat, doesn't matter. But become aware of your body and notice, is there any tension? Are you carrying any stress? For now we release the stress. We turn away from the outer world and the noise all around us. To listen to the rhythm of our own lives, our own hearts. Bless your heart. And bless the life that lives you. In this moment we turn to that life by following our very next breath inward. And I am aware that I am that which God is. Love, peace, joy, harmony. And God is all that I am. For I reflect that light, that radiance. And in this moment, I choose to reflect it by getting out of its way. By letting the light of God shine out through me as me. I reflect that light by letting myself be in the flow of my good. I allow that flow to carry me. For I am part of the flow and it's part of me. And I've noticed that life is good when I let it be. So in this moment, I allow life to happen. According its, to its orderly plan, 
And I embrace this process with the zeal and enthusiasm I embrace the truth of my being, knowing that it is also the truth for every other person on our planet. For God is not a respecter of persons. God is immutable, unchangeable, force, being, love, the most powerful force in the universe, the creative process at work. And I know that by my thoughts and my decisions, I am helping co-create my experience. So I choose carefully and without stress. I let go of any sense that I did it wrong somehow. For I know that I've always done the very best I could at the time. And now I know I can do better, so I do. This is the truth for you and me, that we can make a choice and we can choose again. And we can choose again and again. Right now I choose just to be in the presence of God. grateful hearts we say thank you thank you thank you God so it is always amen Take
surely keep your promise to me that I will rise in your victory. Beautiful song. It's in the waiting. It's in the waiting. <clears throat> Not always something that is easy for me to do. <laughs> to wait upon God. So we continue in the River Flows series today with the talk built around the concept of row gently. And if you'll recall uh, from last week, the, the boat is our life, all of it, body, mind, spirit, our gifts, our skills, our talents, all of it together. And the stream that we're rowing in is the divine flow, the divine flow of wisdom and intelligence that's available to everybody. It's not a personal thing, but the system is designed, God operates by giving us desires in our hearts and I don't mean like the little silly things, well, those two, but big desires, like what do you wanna do with your life? What are you yearning to do? Those deepest desires come from God. So God gives us a way to accomplish them easily if we choose. Although we don't always, at least I don't always choose the easier road. I'm gonna talk about that. So today we're gonna to talk about rowing gently. Rowing, the oars represent our free will because we get to go where we want to go. Have you noticed that? Have you ever wanted to get to a place and got there and realized that's not at all what I want? Change direction, change direction. <clears throat> One of the dominant themes in the Hebrew scriptures is of God calling people to be and do something, to be um, the earthly representatives of the divine presence on the planet to move uh, in the flow, to move with the flow. So people are called and some are appointed and then make poor choices. I'm thinking about Cain and Abel, right? And uh, King David who was called, was put in a place and then made some poor choices. God knows I've made poor choices. Fortunately, they're not held against us. It's not a pun. The punishment is in the, the result of the choice, not God saying, oh, I'm going to get you now. So how can I do that process more easily? How can I 
can I uh, achieve the des deep desires of my heart, the things I'm passionate about, in a way that's easier. And I'm all about easier as I get older. I'm not afraid of hard work, and I know you're not either. So we, if we can choose to row in any direction, or we can roll gently and let ourselves be guided, <clears throat> doesn't mean that we don't have to row. It isn't like there's work for us. It is like there's no work for us to do. We have to make a decision to take an action, to go with the flow means to go with the idea that the flow, the divine flow, God's movement in me, and what is that flow? It's intuition and guidance, it's nudges, it's hunches. This morning I um, noticed on my desk at home early, I was drinking my first cup of coffee, a piece of mail that came a few days ago. And in and, and big bold letters on the top of this mail, which had nothing to do with anything else, it was an advertisement, it was, it's all yours. Wow. It's the truth. It's all mine. It's all mine. But sometimes, and I don't know if you're like this, sometimes I try to force things. I get to a spot where it's tough, and rather than pause for a minute, which is my own teaching that I share with you all the time, pause, ponder, Plan, proceed, right? Pause, take a breath. There's a reason we call it spiritual practice. Practice makes progress. Over and over and over again, we get to choose. So if we can choose to run any direction and ultimately reach our good, why is it that so often it doesn't feel effortless? And do any of us even really know what effortless li is like? What would that be like? So much of our culture is built on the idea that push on. If you run into a tough spot, push on, keep going. Put the football under your arm, duck your head down and keep going. Well, that doesn't always work. Sometimes it's, I mean, we can force things, but I've noticed it's exhausting. This week, this last week, I was pushing, 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 had a lot of stuff to do. I came to the end of the week, had some other things I wanted to get done, and it wasn't happening. There was nothing in me to get them done. And so I gave in to that need to pause. I gave in to the divine saying to me, come close and be still. Has that ever happened to you? Come close and be still. Rowing with the flow means to go in the direction of our heart's desire. Now, if you've ever rowed a boat, and I grew up out on Lake Orion, you know that you have your back to the direction you're rowing, right? There's the bow of the boats behind you, and you're rowing. And every once in a while you turn around to look. You're not, you're not trying to determine every single little direction, but you kind of know the direction you're going in. It's the direction that you're being pulled you're quiet and still and listen to that still small voice. And, I'm, and one of my questions to you, the homework, if you will, is how do you experience the flow? First of all, what do you, what, how do you define that for yourself? And then how do you experience that flow in your life? What's required? For me, it's require, it requires that I be in balance, that I be... Um, which is, of course, order, right? The great harmonizing and balancing power of the universe, order. Couple order with zeal and with faith and imagination, something powerful can happen for you, through you. So when you think about rowing in the divine flow, the very first question might be, do you really want to go where you say you want to go? A lot of people say they want to do something, but they don't really want to do what's needed to get there. Or, like me, rather than take the one step ahead of me, and I have learned this lesson so many times, and so it comes back around. So, you know, I'm preaching to this choir right here. Why 
is it that I don't just take the one step, but I think three or four steps down, down this path that I'm imagining in my mind, making up a story, and I don't see any way I could possibly accomplish that fourth step, say, that fifth step, whatever that is. And so I stop. I just can't see how it's going to work out. Well, duh. I don't need to see how the bigger picture is always going to work out. What if I trust the process? What if I take a step in the direction? What if I move into the flow of my good? Instead of fussing with how, why it can't be, can I entertain the possibility of how it might be? Of how it could be possible if I trust that there is a presence and a power greater than I am at work in my life? You know, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't really know that, but I forget. And particularly it comes when I'm really busy. And really busy should be my uh, note to self to, hey, take a breath once in a while. It's essential. It's often said we're, we're not in a, this is a marathon, not a uh, 100 yard dash. I'm in it for the long haul, I hope you are too. So how does intuition show up for you? The, the question is, another question is, are you paying attention to what's going on around you? When we're in the flow, sometimes it, it feels a little uh, awkward. We're disoriented. We're, things aren't happening the way that we want them to, or it doesn't feel comfortable. It's not easy, certainly not effortless. Perhaps you've sensed that you're going against the flow, or you've lost track of where the flow is. Now, it's easy to say, oh, just press on. That's, that's what we've been taught. But what about if we stopped? Stopped rowing for a moment. It's counterintuitive. And collect, your, collect yourself. Get present to yourself again. Spiritual practice, walking, meditation. For me, time by the river is powerful. Um, writing, journaling. Meditation, deep meditation. Listening to music, all these things are work for me. What works for you to re-presence yourself? To get back in touch with that moving river of divine intelligence, the ultimate wisdom in the universe, whatever you want to call it. We have many words and lots of names and it's beyond all of it. And again, it's not personal. It'll carry anyone where they want to go, provided um, that you're not going against another person, that you're not working against them. That doesn't work because that sets up a conflict at a very basic level. And that's a sure way to shut off your awareness of the flow. It's impossible to go with the flow if you're not aware of it. So when you become disconnected for whatever reason, and it happens, stop for a moment, pause. Let yourself get reoriented. Let yourself get attuned. The river is moving, it's there. This river of life is moving every moment. But I don't always sense the divine flow in it. So I have to represence re myself. So am I paying attention to what's going on around me? And perhaps more importantly, am I paying attention to what is going on within me? Within me, what are my feelings? Am I in a befuddled place? Am I exhausted? Am I stressed out? Deal with that. Deal with that. You know how. Take a breath. Pause. Do, do the things that feed your soul. Not work against the process. And here's the big one, my sisters and brothers. Big for me anyway. Am I willing to let go of what I think I know? There are some things that it's interesting that I've this book that this, that this series is from, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, um, I've had for a number of years. I had it started, as I said last week, I'd planned another series. I'd given, given Kim the ideas a little bit. At least I didn't flesh it all out. And then suddenly in a moment, it changed. I was led to, a, to my bookcase, and I have a lot of books. If you see me on Zoom, you know I have probably 16 or 1700 books in my office at home. And out of all of those, I was led to a book and I picked it up and I thought, oh, it's about living in the flow. And I began to look at it. It's a fairly simple book. Sometimes I dismiss them. Oh, it's simple. Well, the truth is that the truth with a big T is always simple. It's not 
hidden in stuff. In fact, it's so simple that sometimes I miss it. And as I began to thumb through this book, I began to formulate this series of talks in my mind, and it came easily and effortlessly. It was in the flow. It was in the flow of it. Our lives can be that way. Now, sometimes I choose, I don't know, not to go that way. I can dig my heels in. I've noticed that. I've been acutely aware. So the fact that Spirit led me to this book at this time, and I hope it's blessing you, but it's giving me a message loud and clear about some areas. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm really working at getting out of letting my good be in the way of my better. God is calling me to more than I've experienced. God is calling you to more than you've experienced even now, even in this pandemic. Because a lot, a lot of people are coming up, oh, I can't do that because I can't do that. Well, that's not, that's not using our creativity, that's not being in the flow. Trust that if, if, if there's something deep in your heart that you want to accomplish now, trust that there's a way. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to have all seven steps of the process right now. One step, the next one. And why do we just focus on the next one? Because then we want to figure it all out, which isn't being willing to let God lead. It's being willful and manipulative. I'm going to get what I want, and I'm going to get it my way. Now, you may, but it doesn't have to be that hard. That's not God's, that's not God's will for us. I believe that the flow is God's will for us. God, God's will for me is to be happy to be joyful, to be peaceful. That is God's essential nature. You and I are designed, built, we were created, we're here to express that truth in the world around us. So row gently. Row means to exercise your power to choose in alignment with the direction that your life is moving you. And, and God helps us understand that through intuition, the seeming coincidences, the synchronicities. And the more I surrender to those synchronicities, the more I allow that to happen for me and through me, the more aware I am, the more synchronicities. Life can run along clicking on 12 cylinders, or we could be like a horse and a buggy. The choice is ours, we get to choose. Rowing in the flow is not ceaseless action. There are times to stop action. As I said earlier in the talk, sometimes you find yourself spinning in circles. Stop. The famous Bob Newhart video clip out on YouTube says, stop it, <laughs> just stop. Pause, get, get back in touch with yourself. Sometimes it's a conscious choice to take no action right now, sometimes it's inevitable. Life has, has given me that ultimatum a couple of times where you know, typically it's because of illness or exhaustion. I just can't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much I want to. So how about if I let go of what I want to do, what I think, how I think it should work, take the divine idea that I've been given that might come often for me as a picture because I'm a so wordy person, so God gives me pictures to think about. And what if I trust that process? What if I go gently with the flow instead of working against it? Oh, I lived on lakes long enough and around rivers to know that I can, I can swim against the current for a short time, but it's exhausting. And I can hang out on the sidelines and that's not fun. And when I hit rapids, I can try to hold on. I remember years ago when I lived in Ventura, California, there's a huge storm came out of the Gulf of Alaska. And we had um, 22 foot surf, 22 foot waves breaking over our pier, and it's an ocean pier. And I remember sitting in a top of a hill, not far from where all that was happening, watching the storm, because it was powerful, waves that big pounding the, the coastline, it was like, like a freight train. And there were some surfers out there, because you know, they, they're gonna get out in the biggest waves they can. I remember watching this one guy surfing and he was headed right for the pier and the people were screaming at him from the shore to get off the bar, get off his board or whatever, but he was riding this wave and he did, he ran right into a piling 
don't know if you've ever seen a, a piling of a, of a um, of that kind of a, a wharf, but they're all covered with barnacles and they're on there, they're tough. So when he hit, he grabbed on and then the waves started moving him up and down that shredded his wetsuit right off of him and finally he had the good sense to let it go, to stop trying to be willful about it. Sometimes it's very destructive, self-destructive. We're trying to manipulate the way, but we don't know the way. We think we know, but we don't know. So very often I think I know, but I don't know. Rowing gently is to acknowledge that I don't always know and to let God lead. Because God's good desire for me is always greater than my own. In a moment, we're gonna hear a beautiful piece of music called Letting Go. You know, one of the most often themed daily words is let go and let God, or let God and let go. I'm going to amend that today a little bit. How about if we let go and let the flow carry us? Thank you. Giving up or giving in. Surrender is giving over to the infinite within. Surrender is not a prison. There are no borders where I live. Surrender is a freedom. I've done that dance. Let go, hold on. Let go, hold on. Let go, hold on. That's not a two-step dance. That's like a no-step dance because you're not going anywhere. Something that I've noticed in the past is that I will um, hang on 
and then I'll pretend to let go, but I keep a string tied to what I'm letting go of, and then I grab it and bring it back. And I get stuck to repeat, right? Do that, repeat, repeat, repeat. Oh, and this, I, I, had, I forgot I brought this piece of mail in. It, it, whatever I said, it wasn't what I said, but this is what it says. It's your moment, take it. My friends, this is your moment, take it. Don't wait, don't wait for the end of the month, don't wait for your next paycheck, don't wait for someone else to figure it out for you. For the pandemic to be over. Don't wait, exactly, Kim, don't mean, what if we're waiting? We would have lost months, a year, who knows when it'll be over, it'll be over right on time. <sighs> Breathe. This is your moment, seize it. We're so grateful for the support here. Um, amazing property that we have, even our landscaping company that mows for us. Just, I, I love to come in and see them uh, when they're mowing, but I love to come in and see the effects of it. Coming in in the morning and Harvey's been here and helped get us ready. Nick's been helping us get ready on Saturdays. So people. When we let them step into their jobs and I step into mine, hmm, part of my letting being in the flow is to get out of my goods way. And you're gonna be hearing more about that. This is the time for our offering. We're grateful for the many ways that people contribute and certainly finances are an important part of that. Those of us who call this home um, have been leaning in to make sure that we're financially stable. We know the pandemic will end and and it will, will evolve from there. We're evolving now as a hybrid church, more and more all the time. So you can visit our website at unityofroyaloak.org. There you'll find some resources for staying connected. There are some resources for COVID. There's a donate button. There's a bunch of stuff there. Take advantage of that. And if you're brand new with us, if you've never connected with us before, I would love to hear from you. Uh, send your uh, email to rick, R-I-C, at unityofroyaloak.org. And this week I'm going to invite you, if you know some people who can't get on technology, don't connect well, can't, haven't figured out how to use things, because I know that there are people who struggle, reach out to them, call them, call someone today. Do it today. Say, hey, I'm thinking of you. You're in my heart and you're on my mind. So anyway, we're going to bless the offering together as we say the prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I receive and give, completing the law of circulation. I am part of this great movement of life, and so are you. So God bless you, and remember that the light of God surrounds you, us. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well, even now, even this moment. God bless you. Mm -hmm.